Hey everyone, happy spring to those of us in the northerly latitudes. And I'm gonna dedicate this season to a childhood favorite reptile of mine, the Blanding's turtle. Blanding's are a decent sized turtle with a helmet shaped gray carapace flecked with yellow. Its most distinctive features are its canary yellow throat and a face that resembles a bullfrog. Although Blanding's are common in parts of the Midwest, their range is so limited here in the Northeast, they are listed as endangered. This species is considered semi-aquatic and are often encountered on land as they migrate between wetlands. Blanding's turtles are omnivores and feed on a variety of plants and animals, including carrion, and the primary focus of this video is Blanding's turtle emergence and migration, which many of them undertake between wetlands shortly after coming out of brumation. Our search area is going to include two wetland habitats, including this one right here, from two different northern Massachusetts towns. Now currently it is early April, and I assumed I was going to get most of my footage this month. But March was so exceptionally warm here in Massachusetts and throughout the Northeast that it really ramped up overall reptile activity early on. For example, at this wetland, several hundred feet on the opposite shore is located a northern water snake den. And by the third week in March, most if not all of those snakes had emerged and dispersed throughout the greater wetland. And about a week or so before that, up a forested slope here, about 150 feet to my right, is located a ribbon snake den. It's pretty neat, they're actually utilizing an old colonial stone wall as their den structure. Anyway, even before the water snakes had dispersed, they had already dispersed around the greater wetland. Around that same time, and on this very log, large numbers of eastern painted turtles awoke from their winter slumber and began basking. Our Blanding's turtle story begins several weeks ago, when it was technically late winter, when there were still patches of snow in the woods and many bodies of water were still frozen solid. Hey everyone, so recently I was visiting a local Massachusetts wetland on a bright mild March day in part to check any footage captured by my trail cameras and also to visit a water snake den to see if any of the occupants had emerged yet. Unfortunately, no snakes were observed. However, while hiking a short distance away, I found this eastern garter, my first snake of the season. And while I was filming it, I heard something crawling through the leaf litter about 50 feet away. And in the preceding minutes, this is what unfolded. I'm on the opposite side of the wetland where the section is that the ice has melted. This is an adjacent wetland, nearly frozen, 95% still frozen. So I was surprised to find this painted turtle. And it's an indication that it is still early spring because I'm sliding on snow. But check out this painted turtle. He's deciding to migrate from that open water. And turtles will migrate in the spring from one wetland to another. But he's gonna have to walk across the ice quite a bit to the opposite side where the ice opens up. And I'm out of breath in particular because I was filming this painted turtle and I heard something else crawling in the leaves. At first I suspected, it's about 40 feet uh, over in that direction. At first I suspected it was a squirrel or a chipmunk, but I saw a gray carapace, large carapace, and I am shocked I had already run over here, so I'm not gonna reenact it because my camera's right over here. But a Blanding's turtle, again, I'm sliding on the snow, right up over here, also migrating to the wetland that's mostly covered in ice. Truly remarkable that this is our first really mild day of the spring and it's barely mid-March and they've decided, or at least these two turtles decided to already migrate when the majority migrate in April and May. Look at that, <laughs> nearly completely frozen over. Not that it was a race, but the painted turtle made it to the bottom of the slippery slope first and began to trek across nearly 400 feet of ice. And around the same time the Blandings made it to Reptile Antarctica, a second painted turtle slid down the slope and began 
curling across the ice. And here is our Blandings making its hike across the icy expanse. A few days later, I returned to the marsh and found several more painted turtles climbing up the slope from the overwintering or first wetland on to the second. Now this gave me the idea to position two trail cameras on the edge of the first wetland to see if I could capture any turtles initially leaving it. And sure enough, both cameras captured a number of painted turtles, several dozen in fact. One camera even managed to capture a snapping turtle or I should say, part of a snapping turtle. And check it out, a Blandings decided to make a cameo. Incredibly, the ambient air temperature was only 38 degrees when this turtle decided to migrate. Over the next three weeks, the cameras would capture two more Blandings. They were not as close as the first one, but I was still pleased that my positioning of the cameras was successful. It is worth mentioning that my turtle trail cameras captured a diversity of other wildlife. This family of beavers, for an example, were captured numerous times. So much, in fact, that it gave me the excuse to check on the cameras two to three times a week. Captured several times on the cameras were at least two different river otters. Now, although they prey upon turtles, I still enjoy observing them and the boundless energy they seem to possess. I was pleasantly surprised that one of the cameras was able to capture decent footage of this pair of wood ducks on more than one occasion. I also had two cameras set up along the edge of the second wetland, where a bunch of wildlife also made cameos. My favorite two clips include this bobcat. Now notice the yellow tags on its ears as it passes on by. The second clip I wanted to share was of this coyote sniffing the air on a chilly March morning. Trail cameras are great, but they can't compete with encountering turtles and other wildlife firsthand. And on this particular late March afternoon, after some brief rain, I found these four painted turtles in close proximity to one another as they were just starting to migrate from the wetland. And as luck would have it, just 30 feet from the cluster of painteds was yet another Blanding's turtle. And like the first one encountered a couple weeks before, this one was also an adult male. Incidentally, this Blanding's turtle was behind the nearest trail camera. So if I wasn't fortunate enough to be here at the right time, he would have snuck through unnoticed. Okay, so let's move on 11 miles to the northwest to our second Blanding's turtle population and to what I have aptly named Blanding's Bog. This bog I had only discovered the previous fall while searching for a permanent water source where the Blandings are likely to overwinter. For several years I had been finding Blandings turtles in vernal pools throughout the area and an aerial search last September not only revealed the bog but a fair number of painted turtles and you guessed it, several Blandings as well. On my first visit to Blandings Bog this spring was on March 22 and as you can tell it was unfortunately still frozen. But only six days later, I returned, launching the drone first, and within a few minutes, I was rewarded with this sight. Now feeling lucky, I then slowly approached the bog on foot, and right away, I could see this Blanding swimming along the edge, just beneath the surface of the water. And only a minute later, 15 feet away, I spotted another Blandings cruising along the bottom. Now this provided the evidence I needed that this bog indeed was an overwintering site for the local population of Blanding's turtles. And as I suspected, painteds as well as spotted turtles. A couple days later, I returned to the bog, but wasn't able to get there until later on in the day. But shortly after arriving nonetheless, I got lucky and found this handsome male Blanding's as it was walking through the thick leather leaf that borders the bog. He was heading back to the water, so it appears that he had been basking earlier. As with the wetland, I set up a trail camera at the edge of the bog to see if I could capture any basking or migrating turtles. 
The first animal to show up on the camera, however, was this grumpy black bear that ended up roughing up my camera. Well, at least these deer were just passively curious. But unfortunately, no turtles were captured on the camera. On April 7, I decided to check up on one of the wetlands that the Blanding's turtles likely migrate to from the bog. Okay, so this is one vernal pool out of several in the area that the Blanding's turtles from Blanding's bog migrate to. Now, the bog itself is about 800 feet through those woods, which is mostly made up of white pine and mixed deciduous. Uh, and as you can tell, the water level is very low. In fact, this is the lowest I have ever seen the water table for this time of the year. So I'm not even sure if the Blanding's turtles, if they migrate here, if they would stay, if they would go back to the bog. But during my last two visits, uh, I haven't seen any Blanding's turtles in the bog. So this is at least worth checking out real quick. And then we might as well check the bog again. All right, I didn't find any turtles, quick search. So you might as well hike through these woods Make a beeline right for the bog. Okay, I'm only a couple hundred feet from the bog and I hear what definitely sounds like a turtle crawling through the leaves, but it has stopped. I don't see it. It didn't sound large, so I'm guessing a painted or a spotted. Or... <laughs> I'm wrong about that, it's a Blanding's. Wow. <laughs> so we have one on its migration route from the bog to, well, apparently to that mostly dried up vernal pool. Hey buddy. Sorry to interrupt your migration. <laughs> A few days later, I revisited our drying up wetland to see if I could find that migrating Blandings. Sure enough, he was easily spotted on the edge. Now I'm not sure how long he plans on sticking around with the water level being so low, but I was glad to have had the opportunity to observe yet another Blandings migratory behavior. All right, folks, it was one month ago today that we started filming for this Blanding's turtle video. So I think it is an apt time to conclude. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please consider liking or taking the next step and subscribing. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.